Hi, this is Dave Murray at CAD Dimensions. There's four sheet metal enhancements in SOLIDWORKS 2024 and I'm going to run them down for you. Enhancement number one is a tab and slot feature enhancement which allows for making the slots normal cuts. In other words, perpendicular to the flat pattern. As you can see, this part already has a tab and slot feature. Let's add a second group to this model at the top where this angled piece needs to mesh together nicely with the top piece. Selecting the top edge for this second group is tricky because it occupies the same position in space as another edge. The select other option is your friend in situations like this. After accepting the settings, you can see how the slots are at an angle, making this very difficult to manufacture. I'm going to edit the tab and slot feature. Make sure the correct group is selected. If there's more than one group, each one can have different settings. For the second group, in my case, I will turn on normal cut. Once we accept that, you can see how all the cuts are perpendicular to the flat pattern. On a side note, some keen observers may have noticed that the tabs have what could be referred to as a knife edge. No problem. If you want to get rid of those, change the end condition from up to surface, which is the default, to blind. Problem solved. Speaking of tabs and slots, Number two is propagating slots. Let's add a tab and slot feature to this brace. There are four of these braces in this assembly and I could have easily patterned them. For the sake of this demonstration, I did not. Let's make sure to check the new propagate slots option. Since the tab feature is added at the part level, the tab automatically appears in every instance just like you'd expect it to. The slots are what we're more concerned with, and as you can see, they have propagated and appear for every instance of our brace component. You may run into a situation where it would be nice to propagate the slots after the fact. For reasons unbeknownst to us mere mortals, the Propagate option will not be available in the Property Manager if editing an existing tab and slot feature. There is a particular process that must be used which consists of right-clicking on any of the components containing the tab and slot feature. This can be done from the Feature Manager or Graphics area, it makes no difference. Select Propagate Slots from the right mouse button menu, and away you go. Sheet Metal Enhancement number three is Ripping with a Point. That's right, it is possible to create nothing more than a simple 2D sketch point on the end of a cylindrical tube and use that point to rip out an opening so the tube can then be flattened. You would more than likely want to add dimensions to define the location of the point, add geometric relations as needed, but that's up to you. There are a couple of options for dictating the width of the gap. You can use angle or distance measurements. They're all very user-friendly and self-explanatory. Once the rip is complete, use the Insert Bends command to turn the part into a sheet metal part and then it can be flattened. Now it probably could be noted that if you wanted a sheet metal part to begin with, it would be immensely more efficient to extrude an arc with a large included radius of say, I don't know, 359 degrees and extrude it using the Base Flange command. But it's good to have options, right? 
Where the rip with point ability gets interesting is when you've got a tube with a non-planar face. What's cool about this is it's possible to use a 3D sketch point. Start a 3D sketch and plop a point on that face. Probably a good idea to lock it down, add the appropriate geometric relations. I used a plane at an angle uh, to more easily control the point's position. There's a bit of a trick to getting this to work. It is necessary to pick a circular edge, so one end of the tube must meet this requirement. Of course, there's nothing stopping you from chopping it up later, so go nuts. So then, just like before, uh, specify the gap options. We'll put a nice wide one in here this time. Use insert bends to convert to sheet metal, then it'll flatten out. Enhancement number four, the stamp command. This is a brand new command. Start with a simple 2D sketch. I won't bother dimensioning for this example. Stamp command is right here. Figure out what direction you want the stamp to be in. Obviously, there's a setting for that. There are settings for depth. Auto fill at any sharp corners. Fillets on the inside and outside edges of the stamp itself. Makes it all very easy. Let's run through it one more time a little bit faster so you can see it again. This has been Dave Murray with CAD Dimensions. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy modeling.